Thank you kindly, Sierra. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Parks and Rec Committee meeting for Tuesday, uh, April 5th, after the big uh, game last night. So I guess we all are excited and ready to go in Parks and Rec. <laughs> so with that being said, I guess I'll call this meeting to order. And um, I guess we'll start off things uh, with the, looks like we do have a quorum. We have all the committee members here, Commissioner Carthen, Mr. Dukes, Chad, myself, and Gary. Oh, I see Fred Perry. He's here as well. Are we missing anybody? I think that's it. Am I correct in that, Gary? That's it. That's it. Okay. So that so that everybody's accounted for. for. Now with that being said, did everyone get a chance to take a look at the minutes from our last meeting? We did. And, okay. And if there are any changes needed. Any additions or adjustments needed, please speak up now. Hearing none, I guess we'll, the minute stands approved. Gary, if you'll pick up and let's go ahead and get into the agenda. Okay, uh, the first item I have is the uh, parks uh, maintenance crew uh, division are in need of a couple of uh, industrial mowers. Uh, we have a uh, state contract uh, with Van Sants Mower and service in Douglasville. And we're requesting to buy two 72-inch uh, mowers on a state contract for a total of, uh, I believe it's $12,908 a piece. Uh, and that's, like I said, on a state contract. We're asking permission to buy those from splash funds. Okay. And we do have those funds that within spots funds, correct? Yes. Uh, from the yes. maintenance section of that, I guess, correct? Yes, it's a total of $25,816 for the two mowers. Got it. And question, how are we looking in the maintenance splash dollars? I don't know if that's maybe a question for you. Or yeah, it's coming from the uh, equipment money. Right. And the last I checked with Terry, we had 115,000 still remaining in the okay. equipment money. Okay, okay, okay. So we're still going to find that in that in that area so yes, sir. okay I, I don't see any 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 concerns with that anyone else commissioner carthen i guess or no i see no concerns uh um director dukes how long do these mowers usually last just out of curiosity commissioner carthen we try to get six or eight years out of them uh -huh. and uh, that's doing regular maintenance sending them back to uh have professional maintenance done on them. Uh, that's why we buy them. They are so sturdy. Uh -huh. uh, so six to eight years is uh, about the life of the mower. Because they run, you know, in the summer, they run eight hours a day, five days a week. Yeah, I can imagine. And so what do we do with the old mowers? Uh, we salvage parts off of them and keep the other mowers running. And we can no longer do that, we turn them into fleet. Got you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. I yield. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Anybody else got any other concerns? Okay. With that being said, Gary, I guess I don't have a problem. It looks like the committee don't have a problem to move forward with this. So I don't know if you want to we can call for a motion to kind of move that item forward to the Board of Commissioners. Yeah, I make a uh, motion. We buy the two SCAG mowers off the state contract. Uh, for the sum of $25,816. I second the motion. Okay, motion second by Commissioner Carthen, made by Mr. Dukes. Uh, are there any uh, comments or anything to add or any anything to add to that particular motion? Okay, with that being said, I guess I'll call you guys' name and if you would just either say yay or nay toward this particular item to move it forward. So with that being said, Commissioner Carthen? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dukes? Yes. Chad? Chad Griffin, yes. And Fred Perry? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell, yes. Unanimous decision to move forward with this item to the full board of commissioners and pass by unanimous vote. All right, Gary, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, the next item is also a purchase. Uh, we're in need of replacing a vehicle for our park patrol division. Oh. Again, this would be coming out of splash funds. Uh, we have a 
2005 Crown Vic that died um, and we can no longer get parts to uh, keep it on patrol. It's uh, like I said, to, uh, 2005, it has 284,000 miles on it and they no, no longer make the powertrain modules uh, <laughs> to keep uh, the 2005 vehicle going. So uh, we're asking to replace it with uh, a F-150 pickup truck. We got three bids uh, with a low bid being from Wade Ford uh, for a price of $33,030. Uh, that includes the light bar, the PA system and the lettering uh, to get it on the road. So uh, again, that's a low bid. Uh, we got three bids and Wade Ford was a low bid. Understood. Understood. And just one quick question. So do we ever, I don't know, through our fleet and, and sheriff department, do we ever kind of do one of those hand-me-downs? And I don't, you know, I, I get this is a brand new one, I'm, uh, I get, but do we ever do it, that type of a movement of our vehicles? We've tried uh, that in the past, Commissioner, <laughs> and... By the time the sheriff's department gets rid of them, uh, it's, it's just not it's just not uh, feasible because uh, we put a lot of miles on as well. So by the time the uh, sheriff's department has uh, turned them in, they're, they're just they're no good. Uh, Basically, so no more life is left in them. Like yeah, that. we spend more trying to keep them running than we would if we in time. Uh, than we would if we just purchased a pickup. Uh, and these pickups are not anything, uh, a lot of extras on them. They're basically the minimum uh, extras. How many are we speaking of? Here, how many? One, just oh, one. Just, oh, just one. Yeah, one. So you're, but, but how many normally do you have in your fleet? Oh, I think we have like six, uh, commissioner, Got six it. vehicles, and of course they run seven days a week. Uh, right. So, uh, you know, three sixty-five a year. Right. And 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 I don't. I'm not trying to entice us to do more, but is one going to be enough? Or does that make sense to one? Or should we be? We're trying we're, to got, we're going to try to come back and get some more. Uh, I'm gonna. I mean, this is a completely different discussion. Uh -huh. But uh, we've asked for replacements in the, uh, you know, the uh, budget. <laughs> and we haven't gotten them. But what I'm going to request in the next flush is rather than getting $100,000 for equipment, that we get $500,000 for equipment. That way we can replace vehicles, replace playground equipment as needed. And uh, we, we just don't have enough money hundred thousand dollars a year when you start replacing mowers and equipment and playgrounds uh it just doesn't go very far i mean you can get i get it uh, you can get maybe three vehicles with a hundred grand now right, so, right i get it uh, i get it so uh i think if we do that next time we can get our operating vehicles up to par we can get our mowers upgraded and have plenty of those as well playground equipment that's needed we'd be in pretty good shape Okay. Right. Well, you have to go into the general fund to fund those things. I understood. Understood. Any other comments in reference to this particular item or moving forward with this purchase out of the splash dollars? Uh, always open. I make a motion that we replace the 2005 Crown Vic with 284,000 miles on it with the low bid from Wade Ford for a 2022 Ford F-150 pickup for the total price of $33,030, fully equipped. There's a motion on the board. There's a second from uh, Chad. Okay, got it. Any other comments in reference to this item before voting? How long would it take to get the item? Um, is it in stock? Uh, good question, Commissioner Carthen. Uh, I had Kelly uh, Oracle get this, get these bids for me, and she didn't say. Uh, 
So that's something I'll have to have to find out for you. Got you. All right. I'm assuming your goal is to kind of hopefully it's in stock and you can kind of put it on the road tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. it's on the lot. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. Any other uh, comments to this item, Commissioner Carthen and others? Yeah. No. Ready to oh. go. Okay. All righty. With that being said, there's a motion and a second on the floor for, to move forward with this particular item. Um, I'll call your name with a yay or nay vote, starting with Mr. Dukes. Yes. Uh, Chad. Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Commissioner Carthen? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell, yes vote. And with that being said, pass unanimously. We'll move this item forward. Uh, pass by a unanimous vote and we'll move this item forward to the uh, Board of Commissioners. Thank you guys. And we'll move on to the next item. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that, that completes the business items. Uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Mitchell, mm -hmm. we have some discussion items and just some items I wanted to bring you up to uh, speed on. Uh, we've been asked, the first discussion item is the AT&T AT uh, cell tower request. Uh, they're wanting to put a cell tower in uh, Boundary Waters Park. Uh, they have some uh, issues down there with service. So uh, I think they contacted uh, Commissioner Robinson and he asked me to meet with them. Uh, so I met with them and James Worthington met with them as well. Uh, we had an initial uh, virtual meeting and now I have a meeting um, this week to meet on site with them to uh, pinpoint uh, a location that wouldn't interfere with our park operations. So I'll be doing that Thursday and uh, they've given us a boilerplate uh, contract, if you will, and we're going to pass that along to uh, legal to let them look at it. And uh, just wanted to give you an update on that where we were and uh, we'll be coming back to you uh, the next meeting with hopefully approval or uh, whatever. Right. So, so I guess I'll open this up for discussion first and anybody got any comments that they'd like to add on this particular item? Hearing silence, I guess there is none. I will uh, tell you that of course they okay. pay us a monthly, they will be paying us a that monthly was, fee. That was, gonna, that was gonna be my, 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 my question though, Gary, is, is, is there any any any, any uh, resource, I mean, any funding coming to, to, to Parks and Rec and or to the county by putting this tower wherever we decide yeah. to kind of go and if we decide to go in that direction. Right, and uh, I was gonna bring that to the discussion next time. Uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Mitchell, there is, a, there is a fee associated with it. They'll be mm -hmm. paying us a, a rental for the space uh, mm -hmm. and that'll be negotiated in the contract. I would like to uh, at least bring up the fact that uh, possibly we could set up an account for the parks and recreation department that that money be put in the parks budget or a parks account somewhere mm -hmm. that possibly could be used for amenities uh you know collect that money each month and you know uh if it was a couple of grand that'd be 20 it's not probably not going to be a lot of money but uh say twenty five thousand a year we could collect some of that for a few years and have it there to buy some amenities like benches or, uh, you know, picnic tables, that kind of thing, and use it in the park system. And Gary, I'm, I'm assuming you'll do this, do your homework down the road to figure out where, you know, where we look at trying to play something like this. Would it? Yes, yes. We, uh, I've already uh, did a little pre-work. I wanted to make sure that the tower was not you know, in a place that would be intrusive, yes. uh, would would not be ugly or any, they're talking about one of these pine tree towers. Right. Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, a tree. Uh, but I also did want to make sure it was not in any areas that uh, might be conducive to expansion in the park. We don't mm -hmm. want to put a tower somewhere that would uh, keep us from developing something else in the park. So uh, I've got a couple of places in mind and uh, we'll, when we bring it back, we'll show you a map 
uh, and show you where the uh, prospective sites will be. Got it. Well, you yeah, definitely let's make sure it's not intrusive. Make sure it's not where we're trying to expand because we've got a lot of expansion that's going to be going on at the parks. And I don't want to see us having an to not be able to do this based on the mere fact we've got a tower in the middle of something. Right, it'll, it'll be on the perimeter of uh, the park property. Got it. So are there any other comments? And I guess Gary, we'll kind of wait till you come back with some recommendations and all that kind of good stuff. And, and yeah, we'll, and we'll, be, we'll be bringing it back to you next month. Yeah, and I guess I'll ask this committee, are you guys okay with at least doing the research to find out if this, does this make sense or, or there's no interest, period? If there is interest, we should move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Mr. Mitchell, I'm in agreement uh, with uh, Commissioner Carson, we should move. Uh, Gary, we are having a site visit this week, aren't we? That's correct. Walk through yes. or something like that? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Commissioner Mitchell, we, we, we've talked about this uh, extensively uh, on another call with uh, James Worthington, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, Gary, was it with the AT&T folks? Yes. With, yeah, yep. they want with the AT&T. Uh -huh. So we've, uh, we've talked extensively about this. Sounds like a good deal for the county. Mm -hmm. And as uh, long as it's placed uh, strategically, we, 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 I'm fine with that. What I guess just hearing the committee sounds like we're definitely interested, not that that means that it is a yes vote, but at least we're interested in kind of hearing what you guys come back uh, to the committee with. So let's move forward. And I don't think there's need, no action on that item other than waiting to hear back from you guys in the coming months, I guess. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right, Gary. All right. We move on to the uh, next item is Pumpkin Town Nature Preserve Update. Uh, I know Commissioner Carthen is <laughs> anxiously awaiting. Uh, we have all the specifications completed. Uh, Michael Furlaw with Southeast Engineering has completed all the uh, plans, specifications uh, for that. I talked with uh, our procurement director, Ms. Ammons, yesterday, and she hopes to have, uh, she will be, uh, touching base with Mr. Furlaw. Uh, she will hope to have the specifications out this week. Uh, so we're moving right along. Uh, so Commissioner Carthen, it looks like we're getting very close to getting it out to bid. Just yeah. want to give you that update. And I'll just toss it over to her and let her kind of, you know, chime in. So Commissioner Carthen. I mean, it's all over my face. I, <laughs> we are finally That's, saying this is about to go out to bid. This right. is over overdue. So kudos. Thank you, team. Let's keep yeah. moving. I cannot she'll wait. Be, she'll be setting up a pre-bid meeting. Yes. So anyone interested in bidding on the uh, development of the park uh, we'll be able to come to that meeting and get with, and Mr. Furlaw will be there at that meeting to awesome. give them the particulars Directly. of the specifications and hopefully we'll get some good betters. Yes. Kudos. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And, and I guess I'll, yeah, and, and I'll just ask, so, so Gary, what are the, after this, what, what are the next steps? So that, and, and kind of any idea what that kind of time frame would look like and, you know, to completion, I guess, what I'm asking. Really don't, uh, Commissioner. Uh, once uh, we put the specifications out there and we uh, get some bids in, uh, we'll, uh, part of that bid specification will be a completion time frame, and uh, the developers will have to give us a time frame when they hope uh, to complete it. So, uh, and that will also, uh, you know, come into our selection. Uh, what kind of time frame they give us uh, might might uh, help us with who we want to uh, select. Understood. At least that will be one of the factors. Yes, sir. not the only. <laughs> so. Right, right. It will be. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Not a problem. Uh, anybody else got any comments? Saying none. Okay. Let's keep this project moving right along, and I I, I would. Uh, echo uh, Commissioner Carthen's sentiments of let's get this done and moving and, and hopefully we'll be able to experience this park 
this summer. Right. So, okay, all righty. Uh, next, Gary, unless somebody else got any comments for this particular item. That's where we're right along, Gary. Okay, the next one is update on the Bill Arp and Fair Play fencing and dugout project, the splash project. Um, yep. Those bids are on the street and they have been uh, let by our procurement director and we have a bid opening on the 25th of this month. So uh, moving along on that project, hopefully we'll have be able to award uh, a bid uh, by the end of the month and uh, get those renovations uh, at Bill Arp and Fair Play started. Got it. Anybody got any comments on that? David, how things coming on your end? Um, and you and Terry, are you guys good with all this? Um, yes, Commissioner, uh, we're, we're good with all this. Uh, we actually um, was able to meet out with some of the ones that was going out for uh, you know pre bid, and it seems like everything is going uh, going good. We're able to see the parks, see the fields, and could see what was uh, you know was to be needed. And I believe Terry Gable is here as well. Uh, if you'd like to speak on it. Uh, thank you, David. And good morning, everybody. Yeah, uh, we had the pre-bid meeting, uh, Commissioner, and we, I think we had four contractors show up, so we were pleased with that. Um, wasn't sure how a fence project like that would would go out um, to the industry, but um, four contractors, that was good. We're hoping to get um, bids in from all four of them. So we're looking forward to that and excited about it. Got it. Okay, okay. Well, at least we got we got a, a, some good interest in this particular project, so this is good. Okay, all right, Gary. Oh yeah, Commissioner, one other thing. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. And and I know that um at the last September Saturdays, I know Commissioner Carthen uh, was looking forward to doing a groundbreaking. So once um, the fencing and hill and uh, wall are, are finished, and we'll have that beautiful uh, mm -hmm. concession stand is already completed. We we're hoping to have some type of a grand opening because I know Absolutely. that would be an exciting thing for the uh, for the citizens of District Three. So we'll look forward to that. We'll make sure get with Gary, get with Rick, and uh, communications to make that happen. Absolutely, and, and let's put together some dates. Hopefully, it'll work around everybody's schedule. But put together a couple of dates and, and time frames, and let's definitely do that. Absolutely, we'll do. And are you okay with that, Commissioner Parker? Let's move. All right. Well, also, uh, Commissioner Mitchell will, uh, and Commissioner Carthen will also be doing that for Pumpkin Town. Once we get a contractor, yep. uh, we'll be uh, doing a brown great uh, ground breaking for that park as well. So just want to We're all excited. So uh, let's, let's get her done. Okay. All righty. Next item is a senior uh, services update. Uh, Tamara Mitchell, uh, Tamara, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good, morning. How are you? good, good. Good, good. Uh, just uh, good morning, Tamara Mitchell here to present on behalf of Dr. Gilchrist in her absence. Uh, we are just bringing back forth the revised rental agreement for uh, Woody Fight senior center and Lithia Springs senior center. The suggestions that were made during March's meeting have been added um, and were highlighted. So if Phyllis Banks is on here, she can go ahead and share her screen so that we can um, show you all the changes that were made. Give me one second, ma'am, sorry. And while she's preparing for that, uh, Tamara, so so basically those changes and those the Q and A we had in reference to some adjustments, have legal had a chance to look at those and and get their their input on this? Uh, I do believe they have, but uh, of course I will make certain with Dr. Gilchrist, and I will be sure to get that for sure answer to you. Uh, yeah, let's let's just make sure legal eyeball this to make sure that we're in line legally. So, all right, Phyllis, how are you coming? 
stalling for you. I'm sorry, I'm having problems with my computer, but we'll get it up for you. So, so Tamara, one of you, can you do this? Can you just kind of just share with us what we yeah. might be looking at and then let Phyllis continue to try to work on with her computer and figure that all, all that stuff out? Yeah, yes, sure. Please. So you all uh, should actually have this. Um, <laughs> it was emailed back um, maybe a couple weeks ago. Yes. And it's just showing some of the changes as far as a, a small <laughs> increase in the uh, hourly rates for Woody Fight Senior Center and Lithia Springs Senior Center, as well as some verbiage that were that was added uh, to the to the rental agreement as well. So I'm not sure if uh, I'm sure maybe I can pull it up. I don't know if I can share my screen or if that's something I should try. Um, I'm not sure. Yes, ma'am. Give it a try, please. Please give okay, it a try. Let's, let's see. Okay. Let's see if I can. So while you're doing that, Tamara, so Gary, were you able to take a look at it? Because I think you and I and a couple of us, and I think Commissioner Carthen, everybody had a couple of ideals to put in that and made some adjustments, not just with the rate itself, but uh, some terms, I think it was. So Gary, did you have a chance? There you go. Uh, I have okay. read over briefly, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, but uh, to be honest with you, I have not had time to look at all the fees and, mm -hmm. and uh, give it due diligence at, so far. Understood. Understood. Okay, uh, Tamara, you can go ahead and do your thing and then we'll, we'll comment after this. Yes. So the facility rental agreement is pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is that some of the verbiage was added, of course, from the suggestions that were made during March's meeting, and they are highlighted. So as you can see, this right here, this was something that was um, suggested, and Dr. Gilchrist did add it to the agreement, as well as, let me scroll down. So right here, you can see some of the, the price changes right here. So this is the revised agreement, the uh, the one that we had before for like Woody Fight Senior Center, the NX was $110. Uh, for the garden, it was $110. And for the ballroom, it was $110. And so you can see those price differences right there. And for Lithia Springs Senior Center Banquet Hall, it was uh, listed as $110 as well. And these highlighted uh, hourly rates shows the difference. And this is something that was also uh, added to the form. This highlighted portion of the right here. Okay. So okay. basically, it's the rental agreement that you that mm -hmm. you all were discussing in previous meetings. Um, she took the suggestions that were made and and did mm -hmm. add, uh, updated. Right, and make those adjustments. So, uh, so I guess I'll open the floor for any comments in reference to this, this updated uh, rental agreement that we had discussed at our last meeting, committee meeting. So the floor is open. So, Commissioner Mitchell? Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So good morning, Ms. Mitchell. Um, I guess my, my only question is, the, the price increase, did you all look at comparisons around our, our neighbors to kind of get to make sure that we're in line? I always hear that we are always so low. And so, <laughs> so not that that's a bad thing, you know, in, in some terms, especially for the residents who have already, you know, put into the spots and other things to get these projects up. But I just want to make sure we're competitive, basically, is my question. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you for that question. So uh, I have seen that Dr. Gilchrist have been doing some research. I believe one that she was going off was another senior center in another county, um, DeKalb County maybe. Um, but yes, she, she, she did do some price comparisons. And, and, and I'll say this, Commissioner Carthen, because uh -huh. uh, we, we've talked as well. And, and, and yes, that was kind of, I think, at 
our last meeting, we kind of talked about that part of it. You're right. We don't want to be the, not the lowest game in town, but we didn't want to be kind of giving it away and we want to be competitive. However, I think, and, and Gary, you can attest to this. I think we kind of raised the price somewhat to that degree, trying to, to think along that line of being right. only competitive, but on top of just not giving it away. So, and, and it, and I still think even with these numbers, we still are low. So I, I agree, maybe we need to kind of just maybe look at it again and say maybe $2 more or $20, I don't know. But that, that it definitely needs to kind of make sure that we are competitive and, and we're just not, you know, the cheapest game in town and be overused and overworked and, 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 and we have to keep up the maintenance on all of this. So I, I'm with you on that. Yeah, because I, I could tell you right now that these, <laughs> at these rates, <laughs> Y'all will be booked and busy for at least a year. <laughs> These are some good rates. <laughs> um, uh, outside of that, though, did you guys incorporate like what it would cost for cleanup and staff? Because even though you tell people to clean up, right, they're not going to clean it like we would normally need it to be cleaned. So I just want to make sure that we incorporated those prices as well for you know staff to have to come in and do additional work uh, to get it to where we need it for our seniors you know on the next work day so um, just want to make sure we, we incorporated those things and we thought about those things um, and also for security is there any um, additional fees for security if that's needed do you all work out something with the sheriff's office or the parks and rec security team um, if security is needed for a certain amount of um, over a certain amount of people that will be um, there at the site, at the facility? Okay, so as far as um, security, I'm not exactly sure if Dr. Gilchrist worked something out with the Sheriff's Department, uh, but of course these are notes that I'm going to take for her and I will bring back to her uh, on her arrival and we will be sure to, to get back with you with a for sure certain answer. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Carthen, if I may, uh, in the Parks and Recreation Department, what we do as far as security, uh, if we feel like there's an event that requires security, uh, whether it be a tournament or an activity uh, where we feel like there's so many people that there is potential problems, we require the renter to hire security uh, for the event through the sheriff's office. Uh -huh. So they have to do that on their own and show us that they've hired at least one and in some cases two deputies uh -huh. uh, for the entire event. Yeah, I am. And you know, I just I just threw that out there because you just never know. Um, <laughs> You know who who will want to rent, and you just want to make sure that we've already thought about these things and have these things in place. Um, but other than that, I yield, Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you. All. Yeah, and, 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 but but I, I I'm with you, Commissioner Park, and I, I think yes, since we're having this discussion, it should be a placeholder somewhere that it needs to be a part of this. That in the event that we feel that you having a crowd size, anticipating, I'm going to say 50 people. 50 people or more, you need to have security going through the sheriff, blah, 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 and that kind of stuff. So it'll be a part of this agreement, knowing going in, as opposed to saying, well, we didn't realize we we're going to have that many people. Now we need, we need somebody, to, not only uh, security, we also need some help to clean it up. So I think we need to probably address that now. So this will be a part of the agreement versus Some, somewhere, somewhere in the agreement. Okay. Uh, it needs to say that uh, the senior center may request security depending on the size and nature of the activity uh, or something of that, you know, yes. something of that uh, magnitude. And that it should also include what you just stated, Gary, to some degree that they also uh, will have to kind of the, the preferred security would be the sheriff's department. Yes, yes, it's, it, it is required that they go through the sheriff's department uh, because we've, we've encountered, before we made people do that, they say, well, we'll hire security and they hired, 
you know, their brother-in-law to do the security and mm -hmm. you know how that worked. Yeah. Understood. Understood. So, so uh, yes, we require them to get uh, people from the sheriff's department to, uh, to do the security. So, and so our, our, our deposit is for not only for damage, it is for cleanup as well. So when they put the deposit down, the damage cleanup deposit, uh, if it's not clean, we can keep it. Or if they damage something, we can keep it. So uh, but let's let's state that though, Gary. Let's put that somewhere that is noted in the yes. in this in this layout. So it'll be clear that if there's, as Commissioner Carthen stated, you know, we've got to clean up because you did a poor job at cleaning, then sure. this is kind of where your deposit your refundable deposit goes in the cleanup and damages. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah. And Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking about our Lithia Springs um, facility. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, we may be able to think about is renting out the parking lot. And, and the reason I say this is because a lot of seniors do like to do certain activities um, uh, outdoors, especially with COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if we should think about, you know, renting out um, the, the outside. I know we've talked about, you know, everything that's on here is, is the inside, the banquet hall, mm. the screen porch, mm -hmm. but that side area of the, um, of the Lithia Springs Senior Center is a beautiful space to rent out as well. That side parking space and that side where the screen porch is, mm -hmm. I think that that's an opportunity for the county as, as well. Um, just something to think about and look at. We can get with um, Dr. Gilchrist, her thoughts on that. Um, but again, you know, it's a facility, um, it's contained, uh, it's by the fire department, it's very safe. I think we, we got an opportunity there as well. Just my thoughts. I like that. I like that. I think it, it, it's, it's worthy enough to, to have the conversation to see about doing that. So absolutely. So, uh, uh, Ms. Mitchell, if you will kind of run that through uh, Dr. Yale Press as well. Anybody else got any other comments? Good stuff. So can we say at our next meeting, we will be ready to kind of, you know, vote to move forward with this item, uh, but she can kind of update us with those few items in addition to those three or four items that we just mentioned, send it back through via email so everybody can kind of take, put their eyeballs on it again. And probably at our next meeting, I think we'll be ready to move forward. Now, with this delay, is that going to cause any friction or anything with the center, the centers, um, and, and dealing with their operation now, other than not being able to lease or give a, somebody a number on leasing? I guess that's the only, whatever, only that's something it'll create, correct, Ms. Mitchell? Oh, uh, yeah. sorry. Um, and it shouldn't, it really shouldn't create any friction in, okay. in that aspect either. Okay. So no, I, th I think we'll be good. Um, I'll okay. definitely uh, present these notes and updates to Dr. Gilchrist and we should be ready for next meeting. Okay, because the reason I ask is that I don't want to slow down, you know, any oh. senior citizens activities or potential rentals or any of that caliber based on us having to go back another round of this. So if it becomes a problem, just have her let us know and we'll, we can call a special call committee meeting to kind of get this thing moving a little bit faster. So, okay. Anybody else got any other comments on this item? Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. And that thing will move on to the next item. Thank you again. That, uh, that completes the agenda, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, so Gary, I think we've got uh, Mr. Barry on, I don't know if Barry, if there's any any comments on on your end before we adjourn this meeting, yes, sir, Mr. Mitchell, you had suggested that that I take part in some of these meetings. Yes, for those of you that I've not met, I'm Barry Gamble. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm Barry. We're having a difficult time in hearing you. I'm not sure if it's us or we try to say that once again. Sorry, my name is Barry Gamble. Okay. Um, I'm lifelong resident of Douglas County, retiree from the Douglas County School System. And the reason I'm here is I've had the, I don't know, pleasure or burden of trying to advance the cause of uh, the soccer 
program in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mitchell, as you and Director Dukes are keenly aware, uh, soccer is played at uh, Chestnut Log at, on, on field on fields on property that's owned by the Douglas County School System. Mm -hmm. Almost every improvement on that property, from buildings to lights and poles, bathrooms, was done by the soccer association at no cost to the county, and they are inferior, vastly inferior, compared to uh, Boundary Waters or any other park in, in the community. Um, that field has been over there, progressing that way for, all, for around 30 years, which means the entirety of Boundary Waters has been done in that time. The property at Dog River has been done in that time. All the renovations to all the other parks have been done in that time. The pinwheel down at Winston was done in that time and never anything for the soccer kids. And interestingly, as of last spring, I got some numbers on participation countywide as best I could get. There were 300 girls participating in the spring of 2021 in youth sports in Douglas County on you know programs that were aligned with parks and recreation 100 approximately in softball countywide and there is a vast excess of softball and uh, baseball softball fields that can go either way there was 200 girls playing soccer so two-thirds of the girls participating in the spring of 21 in the, in the county total are doing so on a vastly inferior facility. Furthermore, the Soccer Association is by far the largest single youth sports organization in the community. The next closest one is the Douglasville Tiger Cubs. As far as I can tell, none of the county associations is even close, almost to the, time, almost to the tune of about three times. Uh, as we've discussed before, uh, it's time in this next loss for Douglas County to build a facility. Now, that would be the preferred route, uh, about six multi-purpose fields that at some point could hold lacrosse, girls flag football, our high schools are playing girls flag football now, uh, but predominantly soccer. Uh, you know, another potential option is to buy the property at Chestnut Lock in Douglas County and bring it up to speed. Uh, and then in our discussions, uh, Mr. Mitchell, you've mentioned that there would be upgrades at Chestnut Log, which is something we need right now. Most of the committee here, you and uh, Director uh, are, are aware, but the lights and poles over there are about 40 years old. They were taken down off old baseball and softball fields and Greystone put them up over there for free. They, they're, they're dark spots on the fields, which make it dangerous. Uh, you know, 40 year old poles shouldn't be standing up. So, you know, the, the, the poles, the lights, uh, the restroom facility, uh, we don't have a concession building at all. The irrigation system was put in, the sprinkler system was put in by the association many years ago. It probably needs to be upgraded. If the route, we're going to go is to fix up Chestnut Log. I think the plan needs to be ultimately to buy it, but the but the the, the upgrades need to start. And and you and I have been talking for about ten months, and I'd like to have a, a, a definitive timeline. I know there's been talk about fencing, there's been talk about netting, there's been talk about lights and poles. I'd like to have a definitive timeline from uh, Director Dukes that says when. The fencing, the, the netting, the lights and poles, the restroom facility, the concession facility are going to be brought up to speed with the other, other um, parts in the county, and it needs to be timely. And I'd like to have that in writing very soon. Is that something I can have? I, now, thank you, Mr. Barry. And, and, and again, just for the record, guys, he and I have had many conversations about Chestnut's log about um, uh, the soccer association and about uh, all these things. And I'll say this to you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, first of all, the school system is not 
looking to definitely relinquish the property to the county because we've had those discussions. So just on that vein, but that doesn't mean they, they won't, but we've had those conversations. Gary, if you could, please, can you bring uh, Mr. Barry up to speed as to kind of where we are because there are some funding that's gonna be um, moving toward Chestnut Law from the fencing and other things. Uh, and we've got a somewhat of a timeline, I think, Gary, you help me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we've actually got the funding source from the school board and we've got some county county dollars that this commission has actually applied toward this. Now, it's, I'll tell you this much, Mr. Barron, and I, I think you know this firsthand, it's definitely not enough from what we wanna do. The, the cost I came up with, and I think Gary were part of this and the school system came up with roughly about almost $3 million to really get that park up the up the speed. However, we're taking the baby steps and making at least what we can do are things like netting and, and a few other things. So Gary, can you can you take the lead and kind of give us an update on where we are with Chestnut Falls, if you would please? Yes, uh, I've talked with the school system and they have agreed, as you know, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, to go 50-50 on the new netting and some new fencing at Chestnut Log. Uh, they agreed to do that. Uh, we have reached out to, in order to do that, of course, we have to uh, have the legal, uh, our legal, get with their legal to form an agreement. I have sent that information to our uh, legal, Mr. Coleman, to contact the school board uh, attorney to get us agreement so we can bring it to the board so they can approve uh, the 50-50 uh, contribution. And uh, that's where we are. We're waiting for Mr. Coleman. Uh, he has the information. Uh, we're waiting for Mr. Coleman to uh, form that agreement with the school board. Yeah. I know, Mr. Barry, that's probably not the answer you're looking for because I think we, you want boots on the ground like I do. You want dirt to be moving like I do. Uh, and I think this commission want the same, but that at least are the steps because we've actually been meeting with the uh, school board now. And I think my aide could actually tell me on that time frame. We've, this, we've had about two or three meetings trying to get this process you know, moving. Um, the school system at least the superintendent did at least agree to actually come in and help and spend some dollars, uh, not what we all would and have anticipated to spend because we was thinking it would be a whole lot more, but they at least decided to at least spend this much. And he did commit to me that they will continue to spend dollars toward that park. Uh, he didn't give me a timeline. He just said that they will definitely, and they are committed to getting that park up to, up to speed as to what we call uh, a fair usage of that park based off the school system, but the county actually facilitating activities there. So um, Mr. Mitchell, I, I yeah. appreciate everything you've done. I truly do. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I appreciate the fact that the school superintendent is willing to do that. Having worked in the school system and, and at a pretty high level, I'm stunned that he's willing to do it because it really doesn't benefit them at all. But, you know, I'm glad he's willing. But that begs the question again. Okay. You know, and I'd like to pose this to Mr. Dukes, mm -hmm. is a soccer facility, multi-purpose rectangular fields, your priority for the SPLOS money for this next round? Well, I'll say, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. Hold on, Mr. Ms. Dukes. I'll say this. I think that will be a fair question for Commissioner Carth and myself and the Board of Commissioners, because we're the ones who actually will determine how the SPLOS dollars when and if we're gonna go after the splash. I, I, I pose it to you, sir. Yeah, I got you. And that's why that's why I, I want to kind of not uh, have Mr. Dukes kind of, you know, answer that question. So I, I'll first ask, I'll first say, yes, we are looking at uh, uh, a splash on, on, for this November uh, referendum that we're looking to ask the public about that. Now, have we put together categories? Have we laid out the structure of what these, these numbers will look like and who will get what and what the direction will be? We haven't got to that point. And Commissioner Carthen, please jump in as you see fit. Um, we haven't gotten that to that point, but I, I would say this, and they know my sentiments about parks and recs and about community things of this caliber is high on the list. 
because I was instrumental in taking the, the, the last block, the spots that we're in now from 11% to 17% because I felt like that wasn't enough for Parks and Rec to get what they're getting now. That's why we get we got such a, a nice percentage of the dollars of this spot to get some things done like that are in Parks and Rec. Commissioner Carthen, do you want to attest or say anything on that? If you would, please. Uh, Mr. Berry, I appreciate your passion re regarding this. I mean, soccer is a growing sport. You are absolutely right. Douglas County doesn't have that. I would just say we, as a board of commissioners, needs to hear more of this from more people like you. Um, we are setting up a SPLOS kickoff with cities. Mm -hmm. These are the types of things from citizens like you that help us to shape what's coming down the pike. We can't vote for it. We can't tell you to vote for the next boss. But what we can do is ask you to go out and advocate the same way you're doing before us. Uh, I am, you know, shocked that the school system is willing to help too, but I'm shocked and pleasantly surprised. And so now that we have that dialogue going and Commissioner Mitchell has reached out and said, hey, we're going to put in dollars and they are willing to as well, that buys us some time. But again, it's that SPLOS that's really going to get these things done because the general fund just can't support it. If it could, right. you wouldn't be here before us. <laughs> it would already right. be done. So, Commissioner so Coffin, yeah. I, I want to thank I want to thank you for that. I know I, I want to bring you a little bit up to speed if you don't mind. I've been beating this drum for 19 years. With multiple, I have not spoken to our current commission chairman on, but I did with everybody before. Um, Director Dukes is completely aware of this and has been since the first couple of months he came into office. All those projects, now, you know, the original Boundary Waters was done before I got involved, but they didn't take soccer into account then. But all the things that have been done since then, uh, the, the new facility at Boundary Waters, the uh, the multi-purpose gym, all these renovations at these other parks have been done and and, and we and we've just been ignored basically. Uh, and you know quite honestly Ms. Cotton, you know I can bring other people to bear if that needs to be, but the, the situation and it is my fault. It, it is my fault. Uh, in those nights, some of the work that was done over there at Chestnut Log was done before I got there. But for, for instance, the lights and poles, I just did it. Uh, a, a previous director of, of Rec Parks and Recreation told me about them and told me about the lights and poles had been taken down. I took it upon myself to get Grace down to put them up. The county didn't pay a dime. I should have slammed Tom Worthen and his people 15 years ago. With, with, but now I'm I'm 61 years old. My kids are not involved. They're grown. They probably will never live here again. But I'm determined before I stop doing these things to get this done. I'll be glad to come to a commit county commission meeting. I'll be glad to forward the emails that I've sent to uh, Commissioner Mitchell and 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 Mayor Robinson because the the, the city is what they've done with it has been even worse than what the county has done but it's been a complete and total neglect and and you know it, it one of the reasons you haven't heard it from other from other soccer people is because we made do and and made it work just like the lights and poles that we got put up we didn't have any lights and you know boundary waters is sitting down there state of the art and when they built the place, it didn't even have a baseball program to go in it. And we got several hundred kids over here, and we can't even get decent life. So um, I'll be glad any time that is, that is appropriate for you guys to come and, and bring this information and speak to the county commission. I've asked to be on the, on the SPLOS committee that, that mm -hmm. determines those things. I asked to be on it the last time, and the, most of you guys were not in office. And either... I was misled or I'm not very right because I managed to not get on there. And Mr. Uh, and that, they were, they were the ones, you know, put the multi-purpose gym in, but uh, I'll be glad to do whatever. I do appreciate Commissioner Mitchell and you 
And if we can get that kind of support from the other commissioners, I hope that we can get something done. Because again, <laughs> it's all about the kids. I, I'm I'm old. I'm done. You know? <laughs> so, Listen, thank y'all. Let me say this though, Mr. Mary. I, I mean, I won't say you're done. And, and I, you know, I, I enjoy our conversations and we love your passion. And I think, and I'm glad to hear Commissioner Carson understands and feel, uh, feel you. And I'm glad that she's on this committee to actually help, you know, so, kind of do this. That's why I invited you to this committee to actually share your sentiments. So, so thank you, first of all. But before I kind of close on this, because I, I think we got to get ready for another meeting in about 30 minutes. Uh, David Good, can you kind of talk about at least the projects and about kind of where we are with the projects that we got now and and give me the short story because i know there's a long long list of things and then i want to kind of close this out and, and tell that, mr barry some of log or, or, or no, no, sure. just, go ahead go ahead david i'm sure i'll speak on it um one of the things that i'm not sure mr gamma if you've seen some of the previous meetings um at the end of last year but we did we do a reforecast and the chestnut log netting and the chestnut log uh, restroom building are both um, on the list in, during the current splash. You know, if there are any other updates that Mr. Dukes has worked out with the uh, school board, that can be something that we'll definitely put down for a list of quote unquote capital projects. Where the funding comes from, um, that's of course up to the um, up to the citizens and up to the board of commissioners to advocate. Uh, at the end of it, once the citizen advocate to the board of commissioners, and the board of commissioners can uh, can move forward. So just know that that chestnut log has been on the mind, especially of, um, of Director Dukes and of the board of commissioners, especially this committee, to make sure that we advocate for you know all the parks. And so that's two things that's on this list: are the restrooms, restroom building, and the netting. And um, and I turn it back over to, to you, Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you, sir. And, and, to, and to add to that, though, that's why I've had ongoing meetings uh, outside of this, this meeting, this committee meeting, to talk to the superintendent, the chairman over at uh, the school board, to ask for their support. And, and you notice, know Mary, I'm, I'm still preaching to the choir that, you know, I'm, we're trying to find and navigate <clears throat> excuse me, this trail of chestnut log and, and bringing it up to what I call great, greater standards. So. Thank you again. I, I think this commission is definitely on board uh, to include Mr. Dukes and his team that to get this part, because just by the way, Mr. Dukes has been at probably all the meetings that I'm dragging him along <laughs> to say, go to these meetings and talk about this. So with that, Mr. Dukes, is there any, any other thing you want to add to this before we kind of wrap this up, before we kind of get ready for our next meeting? No, we just hope that, uh, you know, the, uh, attorneys can get this, <clears throat> excuse me, get this worked out quickly so we can go ahead and get the uh, netting replaced and the fencing replaced. And maybe you and I can continue the conversation with the school board because we have had conversations going in together to get a new concession restroom building mm -hmm. built. Mm -hmm. We've already discussed that with them. So uh, hopefully the conversations can continue with them and you know, maybe in the next squash, we can get some lighting down there. We're, we're talking about a million dollars, but, you know, that's not a that's not a big expense when you talk about the size of the facility and the impact it would have. But uh, we could probably, for a million or so, we could get state-of-art lighting down there, and that would be a big improvement. And, and so I'll add, though, Mr. Barry, Definitely continue to come to the committee meetings, to the Board of Commissioners meetings, and stress, as I said to you, and stress that factor of where we should be and how we should improve on uh, spending dollars at Chestnut Log. But keep in mind, we're the county, and we have various county parks, and we don't, I, I look at as, as a whole. So with that being stated, I, I got to be fair about all parks. And you're right, there are some that has gotten a lot more uh, attention than others. Um, but this park is unique in its uh, layout from the school board. It's the school board basically land, but we just manage the park side of it. So it gets kind of tricky. And, and, and definitely I thought and asked the question about the buy and the sale. That didn't go well. <laughs> so because I think we had total control and knew that this was our park, you know, 
I think this commission probably wouldn't mind spending the millions that would take to get this part where it should be. But because we don't have that type of um, right to the park, and we have to kind of deal with the school board on how we we kind of move that with that part. And, and that's, how, that's how strategic it should be. Now I'll also add, and then I'm gonna leave it at this, Mr. Barry, I would also suggest that you talk to the school board and, and those members over there about your interest, about your concerns, about, so when they hear it from us, they'll understand that this is just not coming from Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Carson. This is really coming from the citizens in Douglas County as to what, how we need to partner and really do do right by that particular park, meaning Chestnut Law. So is that something you and I could do together? Yes, absolutely. I'd be glad to go meet with the superintendent or whomever. I, I think I would be more effective with you there because you do know what we're doing. And I want to say, Mr. Mitchell, I do appreciate you, Commissioner Coffin, and I and I have to say this, I, just for my personal thing, uh, Ms. Penniman is is wonderful. She is so helpful. <laughs> I know that. That's why I'm glad I got her. So thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Bear. Okay, guys. All right. So on that note, uh, Gary, did we? Is there any other thing on the agenda? I think that was the last on the agenda. Is it? That completed it, Commissioner. That Mitchell. completed the agenda. Do anybody? Did I miss anybody that need to bring anything forward to this particular committee? If so, please speak up. Okay. On that vein, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We'll catch up here, I guess, at our next meeting, and Gary will, will send out the notice. Thank you again and this committee, Parks and Rec Committee meetings, stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.